Hi, I'm James Ward, a developer evangelist at Heroku. I want to show you how you can use the Play Framework in Scala to build applications and then deploy those on the cloud with Heroku. So let's get started. I'm going to use Play New, give this application a name, I'll call it Foo, and then I'm going to tell it to use Scala. So I'm going to say dash dash with Scala. So that'll use the Scala module. It's going to ask me my application name, I'll just specify Foo. And then I get a message here about some dependencies being evicted. And what this is, is I'm using Scala 0.9.1 module from Play, and it was built for Play 1.2.2. But I'm using Play 1.2.3, so it's just letting me know that kind of those aren't really officially compatible. But it's going to work fine, so we'll just go with that. So I'm going to go into that foo directory, and I can start up my application just by doing Play Run. So this will start the application in dev mode. I can go load this application at localhost colon 9000 and this will now compile the Scala classes for this application and in dev mode by default it will actually display some documentation about this application. So that's a great way to get started but when I deploy this application on Heroku it's actually going to run in prod mode. So let's go back and actually now run this application in production mode. So to do that, I'm going to say dash dash percent prod. That'll put it into the production profile. It'll now pre-compile those Scala classes. And now if I go back to the browser and hit reload, I actually get an error. And this is due to a bug in the Scala module for play. So before I deploy this up to Heroku, I actually want to fix this and make sure that this works in production mode. So let me uh, cancel control C out of that uh, running server and let's go see what's going on. So first I'm going to go into this conf routes file. So this is specifying the routes for my application saying for a get request to slash call the application.index method. So let's go take a look at that method that's in app controllers.scala and we'll see this object of name application and it has a method called index and what it's doing is calling a template that's defined in views.application.html.index and passing it a string. So that all looks fine. There's no problems with that. Let's go into the view, and that's in app views, and then we go into application, and then index.scala.html. So this is where the problem actually is. Somewhere in this uh, main welcome uh, handling in this template, it's using a module that's not available in dev mode. So I'm going to simplify this just so we can see it work here. What I'm going to do is just put in some, some HTML here and put in a uh, display the title in an H1. So there we go. And then close my tags. And that looks good. So that's now my new template. Now if I run this application in production mode, now this application should work just fine. So let's go back to the browser here once it's finished loading and hit reload and there we go now we get that string displaying on a web page uh, from the controller okay so this application is now ready to be uploaded to Heroku and run on the cloud to do that I need to create a git repository so instead of using FTP Heroku actually uses git as a way to upload applications so I need to create a new git repository that's just git init and then in this directory, there's a modules directory and a temp directory, and I don't want those to be uploaded to Heroku, just because uh, Heroku will, will create those on, on the cloud. So what I'm going to do is create a .git ignore file, and I'm going to put in here slash temp and slash modules. So I'm going to tell git not to include those uh, in, in the git repository. So now I can just say git add dot, so I'll add all the files, and then I can commit them with commit and give it a message. I'll just say init. So there we go. Now all my files for this application are all in that git repository. So now I'm going to tell Heroku to create a new application for me. So I'm going to use the Heroku command line client and say Heroku create. I'm going to tell it to use the Cedar stack, which is the third generation of Heroku that supports Java and Play and Scala. So this will now go to Heroku and create an application for me. It'll automatically assign a name for my application because I didn't specify one. It'll create an HTTP endpoint and a Git endpoint. I can load this HTTP endpoint in my browser and we should just get the default welcome page on Heroku. So that looks good. It also created this Git endpoint. 
So now when I want to send my application to Heroku, I'm just going to push it with git push. So I'm going to say git push, and then Heroku is a reference to this git endpoint. And I'm going to say push the master branch of my git repository. So now this will take all the files for this application and upload those to Heroku. So what's nice about this method of sending my application up to Heroku is that there's actually very little that needs to be uploaded. In this case, there was only 35k of data that had to be uploaded to Heroku. So the upload was much faster than having to uh, upload like a large WAR file with a bunch of dependencies in it. So now it's actually running the play build on this project. So it's going to have to download the dependencies that I specified, primarily just the Scala module. And so that'll take a minute to, to download those dependencies. But while that's going, let me show you how you can get started with Heroku. If you just go to heroku.com, you'll be able to sign up for an account on Heroku. All you have to provide is your email address, and so you just go to the sign up page, put in your email address, and then you can start deploying applications on Heroku. And uh, every application that you create on Heroku gets essentially one free dyno per month. So that means that as long as you don't scale beyond one dyno, Heroku is free for your application. And so it's really easy as a developer to get started and start pushing applications up to Heroku and not have to pay anything. It's only when you want to start scaling uh, that you actually have to pay. And Heroku just charges per dyno hour. You can see more about that on the pricing page. You can, there's also a great how it works page that has a nice diagram you can click through to see everything and how it works on Heroku. The Dev Center is really the place to get more in-depth information about how to get started. So if you want to find out where do I get the command line uh, Heroku client, um, how do I install that, or more in-depth information on how to build and deploy applications on Heroku, the Dev Center is really the right place to, to go and get information about that. Okay, let's check back on our build. Looks like it's just about done. It's pre-compiled our Scala and it's created a slug file. Slug file is the, the file that we can now replicate out to as many dynos as we need to run our application on. So it's taken this slug file and actually deployed it onto a dyno for this application. So now we can just go into our browser and go refresh this web page that it created for us. And there we go. There's our application now uh, up and running on the cloud with Heroku. So that's how easy it is to get started using Play Framework and Scala and deploying applications on the cloud. Thanks for watching.